A healthier, happier life begins here. Welcome to Mercy Moments, a podcast by Mercy Health in association with True Chat. Did you know that one out of seven people entering a hospital need blood or that only 37% of the population can actually donate blood? And from that group, only 10% actually give blood. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm the host of Mercy Moments, T. Allen Seeler, coming to you from Champaign County here at True Chat Studios in Urbana, Ohio. My first guest really needs no introduction. He has served as a sports editor, assignment reporter, and primary news producer and anchor. And many locally know him at, from his days at WKEF and WRGT. He is now the marketing, communications, and public relations manager for the Community Blood Center. Please welcome to the program, Mark Pompilio. Mark, welcome. Thank you, Terry. Good to be here. Over the years, she has served local communities in many different capacities. For example, she has worked as a multimedia executive, elder care family advisor, and community outreach liaison for hospice, and is currently the account manager for the Community Blood Center. Please welcome to the program, Chelsea Roberts. Chelsea, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So we always like to start out by asking our guests um, to answer a few personal questions. So, Mark, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about yourself? Well, uh, I call myself sort of a storyteller or in our world today, I guess that would be more content creator, you know. But from back in the day as a journalist, you know, it was all about going out and talking to people, gathering facts, putting them into, uh, you know, a form, whether it's TV or, or newspapers or radio, uh, that pe- that would communicate to people what's important. And uh, I think I feel like that's what I still do in uh, marketing and the communications role at uh, the Community Blood Center. We have, in many ways, a complicated story to tell sometimes, uh, not an easy request to make of people. And so I try to help the uh, Blood Center do its best to make people understand why it's important, what it will mean for them to be a blood donor and to tell stories of success for when they do give blood and how it helps people or how people like them feel when they give blood and get a tremendous satisfaction out of it. And so there's a lot of human stories there. So how did you first come to the area? I came to be the the first uh, primary anchor, uh, male anchor on the uh, Fox uh, 45 uh, News at 10 when they launched that. And that was back in 99. So that brought me here from North Carolina with my family. And uh, you know, great challenge and a lot of fun. So how'd you get involved with the community blood center? In journalism, you get to know nonprofits. They, you know, there's a lot of hand in hand uh, partnerships with media. And so new folks at the blood center and uh, was there, not as a donor, but, but, uh, you know, to support in media. And then uh, when I left uh, news, it was a decision to go to a different town or stay here, do some other type of work segue into into a different type of uh, communications in public relation, which has been a journey in itself and and uh, kind of a re-education and, uh, you know, be able to be, uh, you know, a Buckeye. So Chelsea, I'll ask you the same questions. Um, first, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I currently manage all of the blood drives that we hold in Clark, Champaign, and Logan County. So that's my primary territory. I live in Springfield, so it's great to be able to work close to home because I do have two small children, Chase and Sadie. He's six and she's 18 months. So they keep me really busy when I'm not working. And prior to working for the Blood Center, I've worked in senior living and healthcare industry for the past eight years um, before joining Community Blood Center um, in November. So it's been really exciting to um, spend time building relationships and partnerships in this area for the blood center and um, being able to work close to home because historically I've worked in Columbus or in Dayton or Troy. So it's kind of nice to work in my own backyard. That's an experience I haven't had before. So it's been great. So did you grow up here locally? I did not. So I actually grew up in Amish country. (laughs) Did you really? Yeah, like several (laughs) hours north of here. So close to like Worcester, if anybody's familiar with that, but really small town. So all of our neighbors were Amish. So I grew up um, very rural area. So I do like kind of being in this rural farm community as well. It feels like home for me. But my husband's from Spring. Springfield. So we live here now. And so I would consider Springfield my home. We've lived here for maybe four years, but um, his family lives here. And actually my parents moved here to be close to us as well. So now we have the best of both worlds, having both of our families here. So nice. yeah, we're pretty blessed. So how did you get 
interested in the Community Blood Center? So I like working for organizations that are passionate about helping people, having worked in hospice and home care, home health, um, working with the elderly. I just really kind of like working for nonprofits and working for people that are all kind of working towards a common goal. So that's kind of what I found here at the Blood Center. I love spreading our message of the importance of donating blood. And I love getting um, like younger people interested in donating as well. Nice. Um, so anything I can do to kind of work with the schools or pull in younger groups and get them excited about being a lifelong donor. Um, I'm pretty passionate about that. So it's it's been a good fit for me so far, I feel like. So Chelsea, this first question is for you. Um, what are some of the general criteria for giving blood? So there's really not as many criteria, I feel like, as people think. So you do need to be generally healthy. Um, you need to bring a photo ID. You have to be at least 16 years old. If you are 16, you have to have parental consent. But um, I think a lot of people count themselves out before they even come and screen because they think maybe a certain medication knocks them out or right. um, a diagnosis that they have. But really, as long as... Um, your diagnosis is maintained um, and you're healthy, most of the time you are still able to give. So what's the actual process for giving blood though? You'll begin by filling out like a health questionnaire, um, move through our screening process where they check for hemoglobin levels. Um, they check your iron levels, temperature, make sure that you can safely give. Um, and then you would actually move to the blood draw process where they actually stick the needle in and take the blood. Um, but that's really a minor portion of actually giving blood. The screening probably takes more time than the actual blood donation. So the actual blood donation, we ask people to allow about an hour, but the blood draw only takes about 10 minutes. So how does a person prepare to give blood? Um, so drinking plenty of water is really important and you don't want to donate on an empty stomach. Um, you can prepare by eating a full meal with protein. If it's been a while since your last meal, when you arrive to donate, take advantage of the snacks that we have available and fluids before donating. So you talked about some of the criteria for giving blood. What are some of the criteria for not giving blood? Um, so there's not like a ton of things that will knock people out, but um, if you've gotten a tattoo or a piercing recently, those are going to be things that knock you out for a little while. You'll be deferred if you've traveled out of the country to specific locations. If you're on antibiotics, um, there's a few medications that will kind of knock you out as well. But most things are just deferrals for a certain amount of time. So just because you can't donate blood today doesn't mean you can't donate blood forever. So we always encourage people to come back. Let us, you know, screen again. Let's see if your situation is different. Um, so a lot of times if you've tried in the past, you can try again. So I think you touched on this a little bit before, but what types of ID are actually required? So we do need a valid photo ID, preferably a state ID. Um, or if you've donated with the Community Blood Center before, you can bring your donor ID card. After you've donated with us once, you will receive a card in the mail with um, your blood type on it. And you can bring that as well. So after someone donates, what are some of the... Um post-donation requirements? So after donation, you want to um, continue to increase your fluids, drinking, staying well hydrated. Um, that helps you recover quicker. Um, avoid strenuous activity. You can take a day off from working out. So I feel like that's always a bonus. Right. Um, eat well-balanced meals. You are burning up to 650 calories when you give blood. So I tell people this can be like a great cheat day, splurge day, eat <laughs> your favorite meal, um, make sure you're getting those calories put back in, um, and you'll want to avoid alcohol and smoke. So how often can a person uh, give blood? So you can safely donate every eight weeks or 56 days. And uh, what diseases do you guys test for? Oh, gosh. So we test for quite a few things. Um, it would be quite a long list. I would just say some of the things that we do test for would be West Nile virus, um, sickle cell trait, Zika, um, amongst a lot of other things. Hepatitis is a big one. And people are well aware that during the you know, the, the concerns about A, there were a lot of testing came into into play there. So there, and this is, of course, where a lot of the time and expense come into uh, dealing with that. Right. And in my mind, that's probably something that most people would be concerned about is if they qualify based on this, that or the other. Well, uh, that pretty much does it for the first segment. Uh, in the second segment, I'd like to talk a little bit more about Donor Express, uh, local partnerships and any upcoming blood drives. We'd like to take this time to remind our listeners that all of True Chat's podcasts help pursue a common goal, to educate people by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations and information. To learn more about Mercy Moments, listen to the recap at the end of the program, and to search for previous episodes or find ways to listen, please visit us at mercymoments.org. 
Are you in need of medical imaging services? Then look no further. For Mercy Health Urbana Hospital and its newly renovated imaging and women's center now offers everything from CT, MRI, and ultrasound to DEXA, and yes, even 3D mammography. Also, our team of board-certified radiologists will work with your prescriber to provide accurate and timely results. To learn more about medical imaging services, please visit us at mercy.com. Welcome back. So our topic today has been about giving blood. And our guests today have been Mark Pompilio and Chelsea Roberts from the Community Blood Center. Mark and Chelsea, welcome back. So Mark, um, can you explain to our listeners exactly what Donor Express is? It's a new tool that we have to help people move more quickly through the donation process by being able to actually get their registration formality section of the uh, blood donation kind of going before they even arrive at the blood drive or the donation center. This has been something that people are really looking forward to. They've asked many times in surveys, why why do I have to answer these questions over and over again? You just have to. They're important to the process. So there is a ritual to it. But with Donor Express, you can go online uh, right now, it's it's you can find it on our website, givingblood.org, or you can go to the uh, link, which is uh, givingblood.org uh, forward slash donor express. And this is where you can actually begin filling out the questionnaire that is customary when you are registering to donate. So you can fill out that questionnaire, submit it. It will give you a little pass that you've that you've done that uh, that you can have on your uh, on your smartphone or print it out if you're at home on a printer. And then you come to the blood drive and present that show when you come to, to uh, register to donate. And then you've already expedited that process. So it saves time at the blood drive, uh, get you in and out quicker. People have definitely been looking forward to that. So you don't have to download an app or anything like that. You just go to the website and create an account, correct? You don't, but since you brought it up, Terry, uh, <laughs> we do have the new Donor Time app. It's we we're just rolling it out. I've used it myself, and it's 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 working fine. But it's still uh, not official. I see. But that will be one of the places where you can go to your app and find Donor Express. That that will also help screen patients for eligibility, correct? Well, that is what's going on with those questionnaires. So I it, see. And just like Chelsea so well explained, you know, it's all about: Are you able to donate today? Are you maybe not able to donate for a little while or are you not able to no donate at all? I see. And that's the purpose of a lot of those questions. A lot of it is based on honesty. We have the, the blood testing that you, that you talked about, but it is the beginning of the process to get those questions in and out and to decide if someone can donate that day. So you brought it up. What percentage of donors do you think actually get turned away? You know, we were talking about 10%. Chelsea and I were going over, you know, some of your questions and that's a ballpark and it'll vary from time to time. Uh, but it is one of those things where we go into a blood drive knowing that we're not going to get every unit for every person. So what time of year would you say is your is your busiest time? You know, I could say right now, you know, uh, but if it was Christmas time and we were sitting here talking, which I hope we'll be back to do. <laughs> right, uh, exactly. We would be saying Christmas time. Uh, and it's there are some very substantial reasons, you know, that you, when you get into a holiday period, whether it's Christmas, July 4th, other notable ones, uh, people start changing the routine. Schools are out, so right. we don't have the high school blood drives. Uh, businesses, people are taking time off or they don't have time to host a blood drive because they know people will be taking time off. People are traveling. Unfortunately, with summer, you not only get people traveling and not keeping their blood drive appointments, but sometimes accidents that bring more people to the emergency room. So you can see the perfect storm that brews during uh, uh, summertime. And of course, it was way more complicated than that with COVID. And in many, in some ways, we're not exactly past COVID yet. So we have to, always have to remind folks that there are things that are still affecting us, even though COVID is in the rearview mirror to a lot of people. We still have situations like that uh, where maybe a blood drive still isn't back to normal. People are still working from home. Right. So they're not able to do a blood drive at work. That's still impacting us. So that's all true. But I think one of the things that we always say is it's the blood on the shelf when you need it. Right. So, you know, any moment of any day could be the most important time. Now, you guys have community-based partners as well, correct? We do in many different ways, whether it's uh, uh, people that host blood drives, uh, you know, sponsors or people that support us in other ways, volunteers, other organizations that are, are sympathetic to our mission, whether it's hospitals or other nonprofits, anyone fighting disease where people receives a lot of blood, we're, we're all in this together. But, uh, it's, it's easy to, and, and, and 
you know, have to just reach out and thank the sponsors because where we would we be if we didn't have people hosting right. drives like Mercy, you right. know, because it not only in your case, giving people a chance to donate at work, which is a wonderful partnership and a wonderful win-win, but also just those many churches and banks and hospitals and community centers and schools, where would we be without those places? Because we have found that people want to donate close to home. So they want to be able to go to a blood drive in their community and we have to have places to bring them. So what exactly is the Blood Emergency Readiness Corps? Oh, yeah, Burke. Um, a pretty strange uh, idea for a lot of folks because uh, many people, th- the idea of it is that we've joined this alliance uh, with now up to 32 uh, 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 blood centers across the country. I was updating it today uh, that will have reached a covenant where we're, when there is a mass transfusion event in your area, the area where you're responsible to supply hospitals, in our case, 17 counties in the uh, western side of Ohio, the Miami Valley, and then eastern Indiana, uh, when there's a mass transfusion event, and that's kind of loosely defined as a, a five transfusions or more, but it, it can, it, that varies. It, we, we're automatically thinking something like a mass shooting because that's what we unfortunately have become to recognize as a right. mass transfusion event. But it could very well be a, a mass collision on the interstate with multiple injuries up and down. Something where you are taxed to be able to supply enough blood immediately or you're using up your supplies rapidly. As Burke members, when we are on call, we're on a rotating three-week uh, call with with uh, the other blood centers, uh, we will be on call to supply X amount of units, usually of type O, to that blood center to help them through that tragedy, through that trauma. And then in return, when we have an event such as that cataclysmic type of nature that happens in our area, we know that Burke is there to supply that blood to us. Yeah, I don't think most people even know that exists. Well, it's it. the reason I think that some people might be a little surprised that they may say, well, you mean before this, you didn't have a way to get blood? We did. We did. We we have reached out and given people blood in a, in a structure that we have for uh, it, uh, blood centers across the country that are independent blood centers like ourselves. We had a structure, but it, it was, it is not as, as defined as Burke. So we were giving blood when there was the tornadoes in Kentucky. We were sending blood when there was a mass shooting uh, in Michigan. Uh, but this framework not only makes it very, very, uh, organized, very, that blood is set aside already. You don't have to pull it from your current inventory. It is sitting there ready to go. So it's, it's expedites more immediately. But here's the other part of it that is, I think, a value to our, everybody listening and our, our, everybody that depends on blood in our, in our communities. We also know that we, we're going to get it when we need it. Uh, right. we know that we want to help others, but it's really a great insurance policy to know that you, that you have that extra layer of protection when you have a tragedy. We all know about the Oregon shooting. We did not happen to need that type of blood that day. Little different circumstance in that shooting, and there, there would have been so much greater demand for blood. So we're so thankful that this is in place. So where, when and where are some of the upcoming blood drives? So we are having one at the Champagne Community. Uh, we call it the Champagne Community Blood Drive. We have it every month. It's um, The next one's going to be on July 20th. And so we, you can find that at the county building located at 1512 South US Highway 68 in Urbana. Um, and we will be there from 1230 to 630. Um, and we also have a few others coming up um, that are going to be in Logan County close by. So we have one at Quest Community Church um, that's actually happening the same day, same time, 1230 to 630. Um, But if anybody is ever looking for a drive, um, you can actually find information on our drives um, on our website. You'll be able to pull that up and put in a zip code and it'll show you exactly um, what drives are happening in your area on what day. Other communities can host their own blood drives, correct? Yes. So um, I usually tell people if you feel very passionately about setting up a blood drive and you can find 20 or 30 people that want to join you in that mission, then you can host a blood drive for us. So we have all sorts of um, places partner with us that people might think is unusual, but we set up blood drives at libraries. We set them up with real estate offices, banks. Um, Really, there's unlimited, I feel like, options for people that want to 
partner with us. So, And what's the process for doing that? So they would want to get in touch with me um, and we can take a look at the calendar and look and see what dates we have available. I usually ask people if there's a certain time of year that works best for their business or a certain day of the week. So we can kind of narrow it down a little bit and see what's going to be the best fit. Um, and then after we kind of decide on a date, we would have one of our mobile supervisors come out, do an inspection of the space, make sure it'll fit our equipment, make sure it's large enough um, to hold the amount of people that we're expecting to attract then we would start advertising and recruiting for the event. And so that's something where we would pr provide a flyer with a QR code on it that people can sign up. Um, once we have the app in place, people can use the app to make their appointments. Um, I really want people to take as much ownership of their appointments as possible so that there's less work for our hosts um, so that they're not out, um, you know, making sure everybody has a scheduled appointment. But they do have the ability um, on our website, donortime.com. They have a login and they're able to sign people up as well. So we would want to get people recruited and then we would hold the blood drive on the date that we determined. So um, it's really a pretty simple process. We try to keep it as easy as possible for people to get involved. So what types of people need to be involved in a typical blood drive? Um, you know, I think anybody that has a passion for blood donation and wants to join our mission of saving lives, um, we see people with all types of different backgrounds that have been successful. We do um, private companies, manufacturing, companies. Um, like I said, we do the libraries, banks, all sorts of different places. So what kind of trainings involved in that? So there's really not a ton of tr training um, that's needed to hold a blood drive. I usually chat with our blood drive coordinators on recruitment tips, best practices, some day of advice, um, how to maybe structure their day, make sure we have volunteer coverage, things like that. But other than that, they really don't need a lot of training because we bring in all of our staff to do the actual blood draw screening process, all of that. I mean, what are some of the functions that volunteers can't do? So really the only things I can think of that they can't do is they wouldn't be doing the actual blood draws, of course, we would have our trained phlebotomists doing that. They wouldn't be doing any of the registration or screening because we have our employees that come in and are trained to handle those situations. Um, but if they want to help at the canteen, they can help make sure people are getting hydrated and getting the snacks that they need to replenish after their donation or before if they didn't eat, um, doing a lot of recruitment. Um, I feel like we need a lot of help with, rec with recruitment on the front end, especially if it's a brand new account. I think that's the best way for people to get involved is um, we see a lot of success from people personally asking maybe two or three people, um, and then they tell a couple more people to ask two or three people, and then it really kind of snowballs and gets us the numbers that we want to have for that particular drive. So how exactly is the blood handled after you, you guys hold an event? Um, so blood's transported in large coolers and taken back to our Dayton office for processing and testing. Um, it goes through a pretty rigorous testing process before it gets sent to local hospitals. I can't remember if we touched on this before, but what's the exact address of the community blood clinic? We are located at 349 South Main Street in Dayton, Ohio. And do you guys have a website? We do, um, givingblood.org. And if you want to make an appointment, you can find donor time at givingblood.org or just go to don donortime.com, excuse me, um, where you can find a blood drive near you, look at our hours there, or go ahead and make an appointment to donate. Well, that pretty much does it for the program today. And it's time for, uh, at the end of the program, for something that we like to call Caring Corner. May was Stroke Awareness Month, so the doctors and staff at Mercy Arthur Banna Hospital would like to remind you that when it comes to strokes, time is often the most important. That's because a quicker response, once the onset of symptoms occurs, can mean the difference between life, death, or permanent paralysis. Things like sudden loss of balance, change Changes in eyesight, facial drooping, arm weakness, and difficulty speaking can all be signs of a stroke. So if you're experiencing these symptoms, call 911 and let them take you to the nearest ER. And to learn more about local resources for these and other symptoms, please visit us at mercy.com. A quick reminder, our goal here at Mercy Moments is to promote local resources awareness, and involvement. Therefore, if you have any comments related to past episodes or have suggestions for future programs, please contact us at T-A-C-E-Y-L-E-R at mercy.com. That's capital T-A-C-E-Y-L-E-R at mercy.com. Again, I'd like to thank my guests today, Mark Pompilio and Chelsea Roberts for being here. You can listen to Mercy Moments on True Chat via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or anywhere else fine podcasts are found. For Mercy Moments... Mercy Arthur Banna Hospital and True Chat. I'm your host, T. Allen Sealer. And I'm Mark Pompilio. And I'm Chelsea Roberts. Thanks for listening today. Stay healthy, Ohio.